Welcome to Positive Filter with your host, Fuller Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help along the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. I hope you enjoy the show. Yeah. Here we go. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Positive Filter, Phil Wilkerson, back with another special guest. I'm joined by one of my students, Mia Perry. Uh, actually, she's not one of my students no more because she's advancing and, and going to grad school, but she is a young entrepreneur. So I'm just going to read off her bio real quick. Um, Mia is a brand and social media strategist. She partners with diverse companies, executives, and solo entrepreneurs to grow their personal and professional brands. Uh, she is currently interning for uh, Mich- Michaela Stocks, a lifestyle social media influencer and founder of Soul Sister, creating a specific target audience, generating strategies to grow, develop, and improve Soul S- Sister's brand. Uh, she's an undergraduate student in, uh, at George Mason University. Uh, her degree is in uh, communications with a concentration in public relations. And as we know, as I said earlier, she is going to be advancing and continuing and getting her master's. So quite an accomplished student. And so uh, I kind of did that little run through. I brought Mia on the podcast because I wanted to talk about young entrepreneurship. Uh, I think that's great. I think that she is a young leader. And I think she has some things to share with other people, even myself. I'm learning from people myself. So Mia, was that, you know, I know that was a, a quick, uh, quick little introduction off your bio, but is there anything I particularly left out while introducing you? Uh, no, not at all. Okay, well, that was pretty easy. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so... Let's just go back in the time machine. Um, the time okay. machine is, why did you pick uh, Mason? Or, you know, or just particularly if you don't want to talk to Mason, why did you even pick communications? Um, well, I picked communications because it was something that I wasn't good at. I was very, like, shy and introverted. And whenever I ha- would have to, like, talk to people, I would get really anxious about it. And I was like, okay, well, maybe if I go to school, then I can, like, learn how to communicate better because that's definitely something that I needed to improve on for like any industry and personal um, relationships. And so I went in and I realized that comm is definitely a major that can literally go into any field in any industry. And so that is what I liked the most because it was broad and it wasn't as if I was only majoring in engineering, for example, and looking for an engineering job. I couldn't go into different fields, but for comm, like I could do HR representation, I could be like an account executive or like what I'm doing right now, which is social media and like brand strategy and consulting. So I think that major really helped allow me to like dive into different and diverse like opportunities and platforms and fields. So when, uh, you know, you're saying diving in and particularly your niche is social media. When did you realize that you use social media? You know, you're not just studying for likes and getting likes on Instagram where you wanted to use it as a actual professional platform. Um, I think I've always wanted to help. Oh, I'm a big advocate for like helping people. And so I always thought it was interesting in celebrities and like how they were, the, how they had like PR representatives, which is mm-hmm. why I like the PR concentration. But then PR was just something that I wasn't as interested in anymore. And so then I had an internship with a local organization in Nova. And it's essentially like, it's kind of like an authority for older women where they come together and they hang out and mm-hmm. they just talk and have conversations. And I did their social media and I thought it was really cool. And I knew that I was really creative and I loved writing and I loved like implementing strategies and problem solving. So I thought like, Oh, why don't I just start this into an actual business for myself instead of working for someone else and like having to deal with all the irritating and possibly like annoying things that would come with that. So how did you know, uh, as a young entrepreneur, what guidance did you know about starting your own business? Did you just Google it yourself? How did you know to start your own business? Um, I have an aunt and she works in government contracting mm-hmm. and my dad, her, and then my dad started his own government contracting um, business. And I was like, oh, well, I want to have my own business. Like my dad's sitting there making a decent amount of money and mm-hmm. he doesn't have with like other employments or the like not hardships but like the frustrating things that come with it and I also don't like the idea of 
not being in control of my employment and not having my own rates and not having my own schedule. So it was definitely advice from my parents. I did my own research and things and just like dove into it because I knew that one of the biggest thing people struggle with is the fear of starting businesses. Mm-hmm. And I, well, I can't just sit around. I'm young now and I'm about to graduate. Like why not just kick it off? And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But at least I like tried to do it. Nice. Um, and I think that's awesome. Cause you know, I, I'm 30 something, uh, something, I know my age 35 and I didn't <laughs> know that you could, it was so easy to start your own LLC. Uh, yeah. you know, it's a matter of paperwork and paying someone and you did it, you're a business leader, but there's such an intimidation with business and no one knows how common it is for the common man to start your own business. Um, yeah. but you know, you obviously you have that family member it's similar to me, like one person I knew say, yo, how you do it? And it, it kind of brought that stigma down. Um, when you tell people that you're an entrepreneur, especially at your age, do you get some, not say backlash, but like that kind of roll your eyes, like, are you serious kind of thing? Or are, are you saying that the stigma of being a young business leader is kind of going down like more, you're seeing more and more young people do this? I think it's definitely going down. And I think a lot of um, more young people are venturing out into the entrepreneurship. And I think Sometimes with the older generation, it depends on what I say. If I say like, oh, I'm starting my own business and they feel like that's cool and that they're glad that I'm doing it. But whenever I go into the fact that, oh, I'm doing it for, it's like more focused on social media. That's whenever they're like, oh, like you can find a career in social media. Like that's not a real job and things like that. And it's just frustrating because I guess our generation understands the importance of social media and how that's really taking off. And that's going to be probably one of the biggest ways to start advertising and gaining followers and customers and things like that. But whenever you're talking to someone that is older than you, they don't understand that. So they kind of devalue um, mm-hmm. you be industry. But even with entrepreneurs, I do think that it's skyrocketing and that's good. And we're no longer, this might sound bad, but like we're no longer in a generation where we really need college degrees to be successful because yeah. now we're able our own and it's not something that was such a necessity back in the day but you can still be successful without having a degree or right. any sort of I did that really. I mean I'm not going to lie you know I work at a university so shout out to people obtaining a higher degree but at the same time I totally understand and empathize that the degree does not hold as much weight as it used to and that also you can go to school and not do anything or you and you can go to school and not do anything and that degree is worthless or you cannot go to school and do a lot of hustle and you be just as skilled or prepared for the world. So it doesn't matter what lane you take as long as you take opportunities and do something, period, either way, either choice. So I'm not a big proponent of you know, saying having a degree or not having a degree is your measure of success. It's more like what you're doing. Um, have you surrounded yourself with other entrepreneurs your age or do you, do you know any other entrepreneurs your age to kind of bounce ideas off of? Um, I don't. Actually, I do. I have a best friend. He just graduated from James Madison and he's going into the um, like construction home building. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's what it is. It's like he would buy a plot of land and then design like something like a plaza or something mm-hmm. and then go. In. And that's really good for him because his um, dad does the same thing. So he said for like six months, his dad's going to help them. And then after that, like he's on his own. And mm, he has to be- I like that. Is it, can I, can I ask if this young, young man is a person of color? No, he's white. Okay. I was about to say, cause I feel like that's generational thing. Like that's the kind of things that like you really don't hear very often with young, with young black people is that, uh, you know, their parents setting them up with businesses and kind of starting that generational mindset mm-hmm. of wealth. You know, I think that's something that we need. I want to make sure that in part on my boys is you no know, pass down that financial literacy. Like your dad, his dad is giving them six months of kind of some support, but then like letting them fly on his own. That's something I think that yeah. young, young people of color need to start doing too, you know? Yeah. And that, I actually wanted to start my own business because I was thinking about my future and like thinking about starting a family and things. And I grew up like in a military family and we weren't always financially stable. And then like after my dad retired, we started getting like the financial stability and comfortability that we needed. But I, I wanted my future kids to have that stability where it's like hey I have this business if you want to work for it then that's cool like you're gonna have to learn how to do these things on your own if you don't want to work for it then that's cool but at least I can like give you advice and kind of do what my friend's Mm -hmm. dad has helped you for a certain amount of time and then kick start it on yourself on your own because you can't like hold your kids hands Mm -hmm. through everything because then they don't learn 
Well, that is a great point. I think that, you know, I hear uh, some things and I got some follow-up questions. So let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll get back and I'll have some more questions. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. So this commercial break is brought to you by Positive Filter. Yes, myself, because I have no sponsors. So if you really enjoy listening to this podcast, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Every review helps spread the message of this podcast to other people. And if you have a favorite episode, please reshare that episode randomly on your Facebook wall or through your Instagram stories. The more and more people share these episodes and get them out to other listeners, the better this podcast will do. So back to your regular scheduled episode. Hi, thank you. We're back from our commercial break. And I uh, also want to say for the listeners, I pronounced her name wrong. It's Maya, like the singer from the 90s. Uh, I know I'm dating myself. And also uh, slightly embarrassed because I probably called you the wrong name uh, since our friendship and knowing each (laughs) other this whole time and you corrected me. I'm glad you did it on a public platform like a podcast. Feels really good. (laughs) I'm just teasing. But um, as we left off, we discussed, you know, families and and, and support and how um, you know, like you you gave a great example of how starting a young business, uh, it's it's really helpful to have uh, family support and kind of you even said it yourself that generationally you want to set the framework of being an entrepreneur and, and providing that for you know, whether you have children or not, but that future generation, you know, and just kind of like how we need to build that standard of, you know, entrepreneurship that um, you can start your own business and kind of lay the groundwork uh, to support your family and kind of just kind of give them that, I would say not say safety net, but that understanding like, yo, if you want to jump start your career, I kind of, as an entrepreneur, you can come into my business and Mm -hmm. then kind of make a, you know, make a determination whether you really want to do this full time or do your own thing, but at least you know that you get some real concrete work experience with me, you know, your parent. And I've heard about that a lot too. I know a lot of my friends that when they graduated college or stuff, you know, they, they work for the family business for a little bit and then either they stayed with it forever or they eventually branched off and did their own thing, which, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you've seen that example as well. Yeah. And um, I think go ahead. Aside- the sorry even aside from like the generational um like giving them like some sort of foundation I think that it's really inspiring for your kids to know that like not only did you do this but then they'll be able to do it as well so or at least that's something I I feel like a lot of kids feel as though like they're maybe not as capable as they really are and they're kind of like too scared to push themselves to do more but whenever you do surround yourself with people that are ambitious and that do have that drive it just like encourages you even more to want to accomplish the same things they did or even like better yeah i got that and so um i, I love that I, I, th- I think that's a great turn into my next question is like what what concrete lessons have you learned about yourself uh as an entrepreneur like what lessons did you learn about yourself professionally like wow i never knew i could do this this and this as a professional um i think one of the biggest things i learned which was actually a fault of mine is that I'm very big on procrastinating. I'm a procrastinator and I am very impatient and I was really scared to start because I knew that if it didn't if it wasn't successful right then I would be like uninspired and I wouldn't want to do it anymore mm-hmm. and I was talking to my boyfriend about that and he was like well everything takes time like you just need to learn how to be patient and like put your all into it and if it happens if it doesn't it doesn't but like you can always be proud of the fact that you tried to do it so I think that's one of the things that I've learned the most is that progress is patient and progress comes over time. And I can't just sit there and expect anything to happen, whether it be in business or in school or in my personal life to just like flare up and like go viral or whatever. Mm, Yeah. So I like that. But then what do you do to set metrics of success? You know, like since it's not going to happen overnight, but then at the same time, you need to know that you're putting in work and it's actually doing well. So how did you say, okay, I'm going to be patient with myself. It's not going to happen overnight. But then how did you force yourself to like check back in and see if you're doing well? So I actually started a goals list. And so whenever I started making my business, I had a three month, a six month, and then a 12 month goal. So in three months, I 
wanted to like complete the website. I want to um, like already have my Instagram handle and like the domain name and just simplistic stuff like that. And then by six months, I wanted to gain a little bit more experience and like hone in on what my services were going to be, like what the rates were going to be for those services, how I was going to do it, how I was going to network and things like that. And then by 12 months, it would just be completely finalizing everything. So by the end of the year, So like, let's say it was this year, by the end of this year in 2021 in January, I would like be kicking off everything. So I would go back and like, look at these like three, six months, three months, six months, and then 12 months, and then see if I was able to accomplish all of them. And I was, I was actually able to do it, which I was really surprised by. And I did it faster than what I anticipated. I was about to say, what if, if you got to your six month one, do you like rechange the 12 month goal or do you just like, okay, that 12 month goal is still a 12 month goal. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like if you already checked it off, it's not like, dang, I knocked it out in six months. Do you totally like go all the way to the 12 or just like you, you like set a 12 month goal and then you don't look at it until it hits 12 months. You know what I'm saying? Like a surprise to yourself. I think for me, it was whenever I was doing it, I was still in school. So I kind of, I mean, I am still in school, but I kind of felt that breakup. Okay. Like whenever the 12 months come, like, let me focus this two, three months on like school. And then I still haven't reached 12 months. So then I have extra time to do it. So it it was me trying to learn how to balance school and the internships that I was already having and like spending time with my family and my friends while also dedicating like six hours out of the day to make a website and find out like the logistics of LLCs and things like that. All right. So let let me, we we did talk about the school of hard knocks in your life experiences, but just kind of concretely to to bring home, like, what's the point of even going to college? What classes have helped you become a better entrepreneur, that actual classes that you've taken in school to say, okay, well, if I am going to be in school, these classes have been helpful for me. Um, part of me, I don't know if this is a bad answer. I will say, yeah, yeah, go ahead. There's no bad answer. You know what I'm saying? It's your experience. I will say that a lot of the classes didn't teach me what I wanted to know or what I really needed to know. I think that, I think maybe the one class that inspired me to start mm-hmm. my own was um, writing for public relations mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. to work with a local client in um, Fairfax and they're, they were a cross Mediterranean um, restaurant. And so they made like authentic food. They traveled to Turkey and like brought back all the ingredients and things like that. And I was able to write content for them, blog post, um, give suggestions for uh, their website and social media and stuff. And I think that kick started me realizing like, Hey, I'm actually good at this. My professor thinks I'm really good at it. This client really likes me and like actually pulled me on later in the future to help implement some of these strategies that I gave them. Mm. Like, go ahead and like turn this into a business so I think the more the less lecture classes that you take and the Mm -hmm. more like hands-on experience kind of like research courses that'll definitely that definitely like helped inspire my entrepreneurship and then gave me that experience that I can have in my portfolio for later on yeah I was about to say I think that then therefore you're saying like if it's less talking at me but actually let me do some real work that translates to my career that felt like a more uh useful class if that makes sense like you know, like I'm actually implementing something and, and actually doing something that kind of feels like a job. And then I feel like I can pull from that experience and actually use it for a job. Uh, Cause I've done the same thing where I, I was quote unquote, a, a, a client of some students. They had to help me with promoting career services, but they did a, in the class, their assignment was to do work. Like I was, a, I was their client. And so I bet they found that more helpful than someone just talking at them. Yeah, and I think that's something that really does need to change in the educational sector because we have so many classes that are just lecture and you just read the textbook and you figure out these definitions and then you learn this chapter and you take the exam, which for some majors, that might be exactly what you need. Mm-hmm. But I think or like if you are going into the PR industry, I really think that there needs to be less oh, like this is a persuasive class. Let's read about all the persuasion. And instead like a class where it's like, okay, well, we're going to put you in a situation where you have Mm -hmm. to negotiate for income. And that's something I don't know how to do. And I think it's something that a lot of students like need to be able to learn how to do. So instead of just sitting there reading, like having those hands-on classes, like writing for like feature writing classes, um, the social media strategy class that's there. I'm taking that in the fall of this year. 
uh, mm-hmm. online journalism, like those things I think is where like you take the most from it. Yeah. So like obviously career embedded into the classroom and you feel like you get your money's worth and your degree's worth. But as the same, you, but I, what I'm really, really hearing though, is that you got, you also need to have a combination of both. Like you can't rely on just school to teach you. Uh, you've learned hands on in the real world. And that's kind of consistent with your business for yourself. Yeah, and I think that it depends on the person because I'm the type of person where I can take a lecture class and I can pass it, but I genuinely won't know what I learned at all. But the more hands-on I am with the class and I'm actually like doing the work and I have like these career activities, then I learn so much more rather than reading a textbook. So I think that goes back to like the like listening, visual, like learning, like the mm-hmm. thing that entry school whatever what kind of learn what kind of learner are you i'm just curious you know what kind I'm of learning visual and hands-on learner yeah I, i'm an audio and hands-on so I, I need to listen and hear it and have someone explain it to me but then after that i need to actually do it similar to you yeah um so like this is crazy uh, how do you balance going to school networking and then starting your business or or not starting but uh actually doing your business how do you balance those different buckets of yourself and and actual real priorities of 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 life because I, I from what I've learned from entrepreneurship is that if it's your business it doesn't stop like there's no yep. nine to five like if you don't do you know do that email at 10 o'clock or whatever at night I mean you're the you're the captain of your own time management with a business so how do you balance all those different roles in your life and then also additionally a daughter and a, and a you say your boy you got a boyfriend a partner how do you balance all these different roles it's, I don't want to say it's hard, but it's definitely interesting. I think with school, I, during like the regular semesters, fall and spring, I'll focus more on school, maybe on the weekends, I do things here and there. But whenever I was doing more like business oriented things, it was during the summer because either I was on like two classes, but I had the extra time that I could dedicate to that. And then thankfully, my boyfriend is very career driven and he's very, inspirational and like very determined and doesn't let me like settle for things so he would like get me about needing to like complete these things and I'd sit there and complain he'd be like well there's nothing to complain about like you have all this time just go do it like don't sit around we're not doing anything today so Mm -hmm. that was he understood that this is something that I wanted to do so I could like take a step back from going out on dates and instead like sit there and me do my business stuff while he was studying for like his FE exam or things like that. So just finding people that understand what you're doing in ways that you can somehow mend them together in the same thing. Gotcha. That makes sense. There's some good lessons. Uh, how do you what balance if, your huh? dad? I said, how do you balance that? You're a dad, you're an entrepreneur. I don't, I, I don't sleep. So <laughs> I, 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 I made a master list. I made a master list of my roles in my life and prioritize it. And obviously father, husband and father Isn't husband and i don't even think that's my number in my top five my job my normal nine to five is one of my priorities because it's my steady paycheck but father and husband is my number one and two and mm-hmm. so i always think mentally like what am i doing that's taken away like you saw you know i got i got my kids i gotta make sure my kids are top priority and my wife and then mm-hmm. i try to i try to just squeeze everything else around it but yeah. at the end of the day, I know that the one and two is the most important. So if it were to sacrifice, I'd have to like, you know, like, okay, my, my little side business, my little podcast, whatever, that's not my top 10. So if I had to like reschedule a podcast, I'm like, I'm okay with that. I let that go as I know, because my kids and my wife are number one. So I kind of had to write a list of my roles in life and it's mm-hmm. always come back to that. Like, okay, man, I had to be flexible with these things, but I'm not flexible. Like, no matter what, I'm not flexible with my role as a husband. I'm not flexible with my role as a, as a father and everything else has to work around that. So I have to have like those strict place, placeholders. And I ain't gonna lie, sometimes I fail and I let some of the fatherhood and husbandhood fail a little bit and I feel bad. I gotta type myself back and re like center myself on what's important. Yeah, and that's actually one of my like not I say biggest fears, but like concerns I have is as I get older and like, God willing, I do have like children in the future and this business is successful. Like how would I balance that ability to be able to still be a mom, still be wife, and then still have kids and then still have like 
a social life and then have friends and things. So it's crazy to like talk to you and you being older than me and like having those things. And well, I mean, it's a balance. And then, like I said, ebbs and flows, as you know, when you, as you get older, like the friends part, oh yeah, that's what, that was my number three. Friends and family is very important to me. So that, I mean, even all those three relationships, all three of those relationships supersede my job. They were always yeah. more important to me uh, than making money. But at the same time, there's ebbs and flows where, you know, as parents, I don't get to see like some of my best friends for months, you mm-hmm. know, and, and what I rely on with my best friends where we go long gaps and not seeing each other like two months or whatever is like still checking in with them via text or quick phone calls. So I had to like re-infuse uh, and prioritize at least the communication of like still checking in with people because um, yeah. like, it does definitely get harder. You don't get to see your friends as much. You don't yeah. get to hang out with people as much. So I say, I, I would say like you mentally just had to put effort and just come back to it. And then I, I agree. I like what you said. Like sometimes you get windows of slow time. Mm-hmm. That's when you can like, oh man, we ain't really doing that much. Let's let's get together with these friends. They they're not as busy. They're not as you know like this, the 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 stars are aligned for us to to get together. So uh, just kind of knowing that those roles ebbs and flows. You know, like certain mm-hmm. times my kids are gonna get older eventually, and me being so hands on is gonna be easier where they could just play by themselves and I get my time back. Yeah, that um, is true. I, I met friends where I saw them. They're like going out on dates again. The, the husband and wife are going on dates because their kids are teenagers. They don't need to be worried about them. It could just leave the house. So like, it's not always going to be like this. It's always your roles ebbs and flows. The things that you want to do ebbs and flows. Yeah. So I got another question for you. What would you have done? Uh, you know, did, did you say all in like this business is going to succeed or what would you have done if it didn't kick off this business? Ooh, I don't, I think if my business didn't work, then I would just go back into like the regular sector of trying to find a job and trying to make a means for myself. Cause I am about to graduate. I'm looking into like buying a home soon. What? (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) Goodness. Great. How old are you again? Buying a home. Huh? I'm 22. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i'm only laughing not no i'm not laughing because it's unrealistic i'm la- i'm laughing because the level of maturity that you have at 22 is outstanding like i wasn't thinking about buying no homes like i, I want to clap and give you like a, a i might throw some clap uh thank you there in the background but wow okay yeah Bowls. i mean I, goodness gracious all right so all right so you had to have the business to set these real concrete goals Yeah. And so I thought, especially with like the pandemic and everything going on, and it's like the worst year for graduates to even be looking for a job. It just inspired me even more because I'm like, if I can't get into an actual employment right now with everything that's going on, like granted, I'm graduating in December, like it's going to be hard regardless. Don't know where COVID is going to be at the end of the year anyway. I don't want to go into the military and like follow my dad's path, but that's all he's like telling me to do. He's like, just join it. There's so many benefits. <laughs> that's me. That was me. Yeah. We we're very aligned. That was my dad. That was my dad. <laughs> military bread as well. So I'm just sitting here like, okay, well this just has to be like, like everything is just so aligned where like this has to be the perfect opportunity to, for me to like officially get my foot in the door and start these things. And then now I'm working with the social media influencer doing so much, making different connections and, it's like everything is aligning regardless of the things that are going on outside around around me. I like genuinely think it's going to do well. And if it doesn't, then I'll just go back to like the basic ideas of going on Indeed and applying to a whole bunch of jobs. Hey, first of all, you know, you've got a career counselor that can help. I don't know who that guy is. His name's Philip Wilkerson. <laughs> you might have heard of him. And second, I mean, obviously, you know that uh, within your industry, you know, say that jobs are different industry by industry, but with what you can do is remote. So you could definitely go into a lane where promoting yourself and using social media, which is a remote job. Obviously you're in a good niche where you can still promote yourself in a digital space. Um, yeah. Shout out to the, to the, the creators and comm students out there that have a lane with the computer, as long as you have good internet, um, mm-hmm. internet connection. Um, so that's crazy. Dang. I was like, that kind of feeds into what is your goals then? What is, um, what is your goals, you know, speaking into existence, obviously you can pivot and change, but what are some mm-hmm. goals that you have and, you know, sticking to the entrepreneurship, what are some goals that you have for the business uh, in the next couple months? 
Um, I'm hoping by the time this internship is over, I would have my first client. And then from there, I would be able to like network with different people that she knows that might need um, help in the things that I do. And I'm really focusing on Instagram because that's what I know the most. And like being a personal assistant and like being a liaison through Instagram and just helping branding that way. Um, I'm just hoping that everything, I'm hoping by the end of the year, I'll have at least three clients. That's all that I'm looking for is just three. Mm -hmm. It'll like start building up if I'm able to, and I can start doing the things that I've always wanted to do that I can't do right now because of financial things or because I'm in school and I have to correlate with how my mm -hmm. prep is going to act if I like go on vacation and things like that. Bet, bet. That's awesome. Well, we're at the part of the show, which we call shot for shot. Uh, no, okay. I don't promote. Well, you're over 21, but still, we don't have no liquor. Um, <laughs> the, the point of shot for shot is you get to ask me any random question I want related to this or not, and I get to ask any random question uh, that I want. Uh, you want to go first? I'll go first. Uh, I'll go first. All right. If you weren't, if you could have any successful entrepreneurship business, what would it be? Oh, yeah. Okay. So one of my, you know, no kids, no restrictions, no nothing. I would love to be like, I love to be the, um, the black, uh, God rest his soul. Um, what's his name? Anthony Bourdain or, Anthony Bourdain. or the black Andrew Zimmerman. These dudes that are on food, uh, t you know, travel TV where they just uh, travel a lot. But the thing is they do, what they do is they they also eat the food, but they're also really good at like interviewing people and meeting people from all over the world. And, um, you know, like it's kind of like broad, it's kind of like journalism where they talk about current issues, but they eat food. So that would be that would be my dream job uh, uh, or hustle would be traveling the world, eating good food, and then creating content about it, like whether it's a video or a blog or whatever. And you know, just kind of creating around that, but also the conversations they have are not just food, it's about culture and like why yeah. certain food is important to that culture and all that stuff. And I can eat anything too, I'm not scared, you know, being a military brat. I, I can eat octopus. I can eat cowboy. I can keep, I can, I've eaten uh, pig's brains. I've eaten all that stuff. So that don't go. Yeah, I did. I went to a pig roast, ate the brain. I didn't care. I'm not scared about that stuff. Oh, that's gross. It tastes good though. You know what I'm saying? So um, I eat fish eyes. I ate the eyes of the fish, you know, uh, you know, so I can eat all that, that wild stuff. I can eat that. Uh, I went to China. I ate silkworm. You know what I'm saying? So, so I can do that. I mean, the, when I went to China, I ate the silkworm and put me in the hospital. But that's because, it was, because it was street food and I got food poisoning. But that's another story. But <laughs> it, it wasn't because it was gross. It just, you know, you probably shouldn't eat, you know, probably shouldn't yeah. eat street food if your stomach's not prepared. But whatever. So that would be, that would be my dream job. Traveling the world, eating food, but then creating some kind of media content around that. That's a really good idea. I think that even if, like, even if you go on, like, vacations with your family or let's say, like, you go on a vacation with your boys and you just still, like, make like a vlog about it and then like make a podcast with your friends about y'all traveling and doing those things. Well, I love to eat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like when I go on vacation, I definitely like to say, you know, what's the best place. I don't mm -hmm. want the I don't want the tourist spot. I like, I want to know like what's the best place for real deal, authentic, whatever, ex you know, insert whatever, and then yeah. eat it and then eat that. So, you know, legit, the best tacos are uh, Americanized, but whatever the best tacos are in Austin, Texas. Really? I've never been to Texas before. I'm trying to go and visit one day. Well, go to Austin. It's my favorite city in the, in the United States. Shout out to Austin. <laughs> All right. Here's my question for you. Um, okay. You're a military brat, right? Similar to me. Um, did you, you know, live other places uh, internationally? And yeah. If so what was the best international place? Let's do two. What was the best domestic base you've been at? You know, domestic place you lived and yeah. best international place you lived in your experience as a military brat? Um, the only international place I've lived in was in Madrid, Spain. My dad and his unit were the first people to establish the NATO base in Spain. And so I was, I was like two, two and I left when I was four. So I don't really rem remember a lot yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, but what they say, it was really nice. It was really beautiful. Like Spain is wonderful. And then, um, domestic. I would have to say, what do you mean by, I like the people more, I like the area. Oh, no, more. I mean, I'm about to say, like, no no offense, but I lived all over the United States. Yeah. And uh, Fort Belvoir, Northern Virginia is probably the best place I ever got. My dad got <laughs> stationed 
uh, no shade, but all shade to Alabama, which wasn't great, or Fort Raleigh, Kansas. So um, I would say domestically, in my experience, Northern Virginia is the best place my dad ever got stationed. So that's what would, I'm saying. I would say Virginia, but the thing is, he wasn't stationed here. He retired and came to do it. <laughs> okay. okay. So I guess the best place would probably be, I was, we were stationed in Fort Drum, which is in New York. Yeah, near yeah, 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 I know that. No, but I was also like a Southern girl. So it was like exciting coming up and walking outside and seeing that the snow is all the way up to the door and you can't get out and everyone uh -huh. on riding like snowmobiles to get to work and things. And you're like, yo, this seems like a movie. This is kind of dope. So I'd probably yeah. say that. For a drum. And then you're in Fort Drum. I've been there to visit. My mom was stationed here for a little bit. Did you go to mm -hmm. the Thousand Islands? No, I was, we never really did anything whenever we were there. No, oh, that was pretty <laughs> dope. Cause that's up there. There's a legit, like a lot of islands and you can buy it. And some are on the Canada side. And well, I mean, rich people, you can go to Thousand Island and buy your own island. What the heck? And then like build a house on it. And so these people bought their own, like they're literally like legit small plots with houses on them. Thousand Islands. It's pretty cool. All right, well, that's goals. Maybe you'll buy one of those up there. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is the uh, we did a great episode, Maya, not Mia. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> like the singer. I can't believe you let me do that. Like that's like me. Mis no, that's like that's like me. Uh, when I mispronounce people, mispronounce and misspell my name, I just never corrected them because that's just who I am. Well, I didn't know if it was rude because you had already said it, and I was like, oh, I don't want him to start all over. Like it doesn't no, matter. No, it's too late. It's too late. Yeah, <laughs> we, we was already ripping and running. I probably, and I know I did that to your face multiple times. Um, so um, with that being said, though, mm -hmm. the stage is set. Uh, this is your time to, uh, I call it shout outs and plugs. So shout outs means you get to shout out anyone you want to show some love to. And then plugs, plugs is anything where you want the listeners to follow up with you. And, you know, just social media handles, website, all that. So uh, the stage is set, you know, whatever. Shout outs wait, wait. and plugs. What? For shout outs, <laughs> does it matter what I shout out? No, not at all. I, it's called shout outs and plugs. I, I mean, I have no wrote, I legit have no structure uh, besides whoever you want to show some love to for this okay. episode. And then the plugs, though, yes, please, for the plugs, have a little bit of structure of where whatever you tell me as a plug, you make sure you give it to me so I can put it in the show notes so that the followers of the, I mean, the listeners can follow up with you. So, shout outs and plugs. Okay, so for shout outs with everything that's going on right now in the media and the news, I want to shout out Black Lives Matter. You can find their Instagram, their Facebook, um, their website, everything. Go sign petitions if you can't protest. Go sign petitions if you can't donate. And just have meaningful dialogue with your friends and family about these things because it's important and it's something that definitely needs to change so that we can be in a more unifying country and just like accept and love each other more. And for plugs, I would like to plug my personal Instagram, mm -hmm. which is M-A dot E-L-L-I-E-E. -E -E, so Ma dot Ellie. Mm -hmm. um, that's my personal brand. I'm thinking about bouncing between doing an official Instagram for my business or just like having its own one. But if you want to follow my business Instagram, then it's Perry, P-E-R-R-I-E dot co on Instagram. And yeah, send me a DM or an email or something if you need anything regarding brand consulting, Instagram advertising, Instagram management, uh, just things like that. Excellent. And I'll definitely put both of those handles in the show notes so that people okay. can follow up with you and DM you and learn a little bit and keep also keep uh, keep abreast to your journey. And, you know, as uh, she said, too, with the shout outs and plugs, uh, surprise, surprise, if you know me, I'm an African-American male, black male. And so this dialogue is very important. And I definitely want to use my platform to share that, like, definitely follow along with the Black Lives Matter. Or, you know, if not, just, you know, if you're not down with, like, the, the whole hashtag and all that stuff, still check in and have dialogue across the aisle with people that are different than you across religions, race, all those things. Because uh, dialogue is where we're going to have um, come to a unifying um platform Foundation. and foundation and working together and making this world a better place so you know i mean obviously there's a lot of issues that we can we can focus on but if it particularly you know with these times of COVID 19 make sure that you're staying safe and also that you're just making sure that you're you're showing love and and, and helping other people um in this these trying times so with that being said uh listeners of the podcast please send some questions uh 
call the hotline 571-336-6560. Uh, follow the podcast, share this episode, follow uh, Maya's progress and, and connect with her. And then, you know, let's keep it moving. Thank you much. And we're out. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career with a little self-help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends and like the Facebook page, Spreading Positivity of Movement. Thanks for listening.